And I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales, hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadow. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. It was five o'clock, the end of another work day for some, the beginning for others. And the locker room chatter had slipped into its usual pattern. About wives, cars, food, and the thousand things that happen daily in a bank as busy as Crane National. To Walter Mason, though, it was a day of days, something special. And he half hoped the others would let him go in peace. Yet wanting at the same time to leap up on a bench, shout it out at the top of his lungs. Hey, I just remembered something. Remember what, Charlie? This is it, isn't it? This is what? Sure. Hey, what do you know, fellas? This is Walter's big night. Ah, cut it out, Charlie. They don't care about... Not much, they don't. How about it, boys? We've all got to be nice to Walter from now on. He's liable to be the boss around here one of these days. <laughs> <laughs> all kidding aside, pal, we think it's great. Thanks. Where's this shindy going to be? Out at the crane place in Long Island? Yeah. understand they're going to have two orchestras. Yeah. One of them will probably be a rumba band, I'll bet. Hey, how about that? I can just see you now, Walter, huh? <laughs> hey, you're not going dressed in that, are you? This is bound to be a soup and fish affair. Ah, I rented a dinner jacket. You know, the works. Oh, you'll be a smash. You know, they say there are two sure roads to success. One is to have plenty of money to start with. The other is to marry the boss's daughter. Oh, but this isn't... Oh, well, almost. We're going to keep an eye on you, Walter. 20 years a messenger, isn't it? And I'll bet they give you a big, shiny desk less than a month after your daughter marries young Crane. You know, it's hard to believe that Mrs. Crane will take this without a battle. What do you mean? Just that some of those Long Island swells will probably figure an ordinary working man isn't good enough for them. My Kathy's good enough for anybody. I know that, pal. It's his mother I'm talking about. You know, in a pinch, I'll bet she lays down the law to young Crane, tells him what to do. Uh, I'm not too sure about that. Yeah? How well do you know him? He's clerking right here in the bank, isn't he? Working himself up just like his father from the bottom. <laughs> What's wrong with that? Well, Donald Crane isn't exactly working himself up, you know. Uh, wait a minute. My daughter is going to marry Donald. I'm happy naturally, not because of that Long Island crowd. I'm happy because both Cassie and I feel he's a fine young man. Fine man like his father. And as for anything better than that, do me a big favor by forgetting all about that Long Island snob stuff. That's all. So long, fellas. Walter. Good luck, pal. Thanks. You know, I think this is going to be the greatest moment of my life. Sure it is. Yes, it's going to be the most wonderful event of your life, Walter. The party at the Crane home. Announcing the engagement of your daughter to young Donald Crane. And that's why everything must be perfect. Right down to the carnation in the lapel of your rented dinner jacket. And even though it'll cost you at least six dollars or so, you've decided you're going to ride out there in a taxi. Yes, Walter. Everything must be right. Just right. My name is Mason, sir. Walter Mason. I'm, uh, Miss Mason's father. Oh, yes, of course. This way, please. Sit down. 
Well, thank you. I thought it would be nice if we had a quiet little chat. <sighs> Sorry. I want you to know, first of all, Mr. Mason, how much I admire your daughter. She's a charming girl. Thank you, Mrs. Green. I'm mighty proud of my Kathy. You have a right to be. And Donald worships her, of course. I'm sure they're going to be very happy together. I, uh... I don't know quite how to say this, Mr. Mason. So I'm afraid I shall have to put it rather bluntly. What, what's that, Mrs. Green? I'm not entirely convinced that this... this marriage will work out. Donald and I have discussed it frequently, but... I'm afraid he's as stubborn as his father. I don't think I understand. It's hard to reason with young people at a time like this, Mr. Mason. Of course, you know I have opposed this alliance from the start. No, I didn't. But, but why? There's little point in trying to disguise the facts, Mr. Mason. You and I both know that Donald is marrying out of his class. But let me finish. When I realized this thing was getting serious, I took it upon myself to investigate your background quite thoroughly. You what? I hired a private investigator. It seems he's run into a blank wall. He could find nothing of your whereabouts or your occupation prior to the time you came to work for my husband. But what's that got to do with Kathy and your son? Everything. People in our position can't be too careful, you know. I wish Mr. Crane was alive, so he could sit there and listen to you talk. Please, Mr. What right have you got to investigate me? What difference does it make where I was before I came to work for your husband, or any other time for that matter? You've taken a great deal upon yourself, Mrs. Crane. You want my frank opinion? I think your husband would have been shocked by your attitude. <laughs> Tell her the truth, Billy. Why didn't you tell her about Billy Ford and Sing Sing and 10 years in a charge of manslaughter? And don't tell me I'm wrong, I was there. Sure. Sure you were. Roy Sharp. I remember now. It hit me the minute you walked in here tonight, but I wasn't sure until a few minutes ago. There's a reason for the blank wall the gumshoe ran into, isn't there? I didn't try to fool anybody. I told Mr. Crane. He helped me. Oh, sure. But he's dead now. And I'm afraid uh, Mrs. Crane hasn't got his understanding heart. You know something, Billy? As of a couple of hours ago, I started to believe in miracles again. What do you mean? I'm in a spot. I need 10 grand in the worst way, and you're going to get it for me. 10,000? Uh, tomorrow's my night off. I generally eat in a little cafe called Julio's on 60th Street. I'll, uh, I'll be there about nine. But I can't... You'll be there, too. With the ten grand. Hmm? After 20 years, the blank wall that separated Billy Ford, ex-convict, from Walter Mason, respectable bank employee, has given way. It came at a terrible moment, didn't it? And you know that one word from Sharp will put an end to the marriage of your daughter Kathy and Donald Crane. You've had ample time to think about it, decide what you must do. There's no other way, is there, Walter? Kathy's happiness comes first. Sharp must have his money. Well, good morning, Walt. Hi, Jim. Uh, I'd like to have you check my account. Uh, give me the exact balance. I'm going to withdraw it all at break a I just wanted to know. <laughs> we kept very good track. <laughs> sure, just a second. Well, Walt, in this day and age, I'd say you are a rich man. Oh. 3,200. Thanks, Jim. Thanks. 
$3,200, Walter. It isn't very much, is it? And it leaves $6,800 to go if you want to buy sharp sight. Oh, you're just the man I wanted to see. Oh, good morning, Walter. How'd the big soiree go off last night? Oh, fine. Just fine. You rumbled down with some chick little David huh? Charlie, listen to me. What goes, pal? Something wrong? I don't know quite how to ask this, but... What is it? You, you in some kind of trouble? Charlie, how much money have you got in the bank? Huh? You mean my savings? Uh, mm. I know it isn't nice to ask. Oh, skip it. There's no fortune either. Oh, I guess I've managed around a couple of thousand. Why? Two thousand? Yeah. I know I haven't any right to ask you for all of it, but... What? Oh, well, you're doggone right you haven't. Well, the, the wife would wring my neck. How much could you let me have? You, you know I'd pay it back. Oh, sure, sure. But, well, two thousand's all I've got, and... Well, five hundred to be tough enough to explain. You know, if I didn't really need it, I wouldn't ask you for it, Charlie. Well, look, look, maybe there's some other way I can help. No, Charlie, no. Well, look, the 500 yours, pal. You're my best friend. No, it's all right. Forget about it for now. Well, Walt, there must be, must be something I can do. Yeah. Uh, tell Mr. Cromwell that I came in, but I wasn't feeling well, and I went on home. Well, sure, well, sure. That's all, Charlie. Just, just, just tell him that. What are you worth, or any man, at a time like this? That's the question that burns in your mind, isn't it, Walter? Now it's the cold, hard fact of how to raise $10,000, and fast. Well, well, my good friend, Mr. Mason. Hello. Hello, Mr. Arnold. Sit down. What brings you out this time of the day? You took time out to... Collect for your hobby, huh? Mm, you collect us. Today, I'm not collecting. I'm selling. Selling? After all the years what you put in? I know you're the one man that'll give me a fair price. Fair price? How could anybody put an evaluation on your stamps that isn't so much the stamps, but the work what you put in all these years? How could anybody put a price on this, my good friend? It's very nice of you, Mr. Arnold, but... Oh, well, it's been taking up too much of my time lately. I... I decided to quit. Oh, I can't believe this, that you... You dropping out from the society? No, no. Did something happen? Mr. Arnold, I made up my mind. How much? How much is my collection worth? Could I make a suggestion? Yes. I prefer to give it him. No, 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 as a loan, as a loan. You see, this way I could keep the stamps for a little while altogether, in case you change your mind, huh? You're a very unusual man, Mr. Arnold. Lord, this is business. Uh, after all, I don't want to lose a good customer. I know better than that. But very well, Mr. Businessman. Uh, how much of a loan do you make in my collection? Thousand dollars? Would this help? A thousand? On a little collection like... Mr. Arnold, it's a pity so few as ever know our real friends. You've added it up time and time again, haven't you, Walter? Every cent you've been able to raise. But it comes only to a little over $6,000. It's not what Sharp asked for, but something you'll have to agree to, because there's no one else you can turn to for help. Walter. Uh, you're right. 
But not too late to pick up the check. You care for anything? No. Well, shall we uh, get right to the point? Did you bring the money? Got to talk to your shop. You're not going to disappoint me, are you? I'm only going to be able to raise 6200 And I asked for 10 I thought I made that quite clear. Best I could do. Really? I don't care about that. I told you I needed 10000 and I meant it. But you don't know what trouble I went through trying to raise that money. I have troubles, too, Billy. Yep. Give me a little time. I'll raise the rest of it. I promise. When? Oh, in a couple of days. I don't know why I should make things so easy for you, Billy. What are you talking about? You can get the money for me in another way. And soon. After all, you work in a bank. If you're suggesting that... I'm not suggesting anything. I'm telling you what you're going to do. So, go on. Your job opens up some very interesting possibilities for an ex-convict. People I work for have faith in me. Really? I'm surprised the bonding company slipped up that badly. I'm not covered by any bond. Oh? Mr. Crane was alive when I got out of prison. Decent enough to give me a chance. Bless him, Billy. Bless him. Because you'll have that chance now. Get to the point, Sharp. I understand you're delivering a batch of negotiable securities tomorrow. What are it? You're taking them to the Lincoln Investment Company at 10.30, aren't you? I know what you're thinking. But it's no go. Rather have the people find out about me. Your bluffing friend. That daughter of yours means more to you than anything else in the world. You've got it all figured out, haven't you? I've got you figured out. That's why I'm so sure you'll cooperate tomorrow. Oh, don't worry, you'll be in the clear. It'll just be an unidentified holdup. I'll even mush you up a little, just to make your story look good. I don't want any part of it. I think you do, Billy. Sleep on it. You'll wake up in the morning with the right answer. No, no, I won't. I'll see you tomorrow when you take that morning stroll. It still doesn't seem real, does it, Walter? like walking through some terrible nightmare. All the while, you're telling yourself over and over that this thing can't be happening after all these years. Good morning, Walter. How are you feeling? Oh, good morning, Mr. Cornwell. I'm sorry to be late. Well, it's quite all right. We weren't expecting you at all today. Charlie told me yesterday you weren't well. Oh, I feel just fine. I sounds like You sure of that? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Well, I guess he thought you just needed a rest because he took over for you today. Took over? Those securities for Lincoln Investment. He's delivering them. Oh, but Mr. Cromwell, he can't. I, I mean, I'm perfectly able. I'll, I'll go tell him. Well, it's too late, I'm afraid. You see, he left some time ago. Left? But, Mr. Cromwell, there's... Yes, Walter? Nothing. I guess Charlie can handle it all right. Well, of course he can. Now, look, why don't you go on home, hmm? Charlie comes back and finds you hanging around here, you think that all he did was for nothing. <laughs> it's all over, isn't it, Walter? Completely out of your hands now. And you know the minute Roy shot sees your friend Charlie carrying the satchel in your place. He'll reason you refuse to go along with his plan. He'll go straight to Mrs. Crane, tell her about your past, everything. Good morning, honey. Hello, Dad. You're just getting home from Long Island? Oh, yes, but what are you doing home this time of day? Aren't you well? I'm all right, honey. 
Just got to talk to you. We haven't got much time. Something's wrong. What's happened? Please sit down. Kathy, you remember that young man I used to tell you about? Billy Ford? Yes, the one who went to prison. Good kid. Had tough breaks. Got in with a bad crowd. Trouble. You used to think a lot of him. Died a long time ago, didn't he? I thought he did. What do you mean? Kathy? I'm Billy Ford. I used to wonder about that. But why are you telling me now, Dan? I'm afraid everybody's gonna know. Someone found out? Roy Sharp, Mrs. Crane's butler. You going out? Yes. Oh, believe me, Dad, this doesn't make any difference between us, but... Well, I must be honest with Don now, while he still has a chance to change his mind. I'm sorry, Kathy. It's all right, Dad. Don't worry. I'll go with you. No, I... I'd rather face him alone. The terrible coincidence that placed you and Roy Sharp at the same party on Long Island ended all hope for you, didn't it, Walter? Destroyed your daughter's happiness, too. Yes, at that moment, the blank wall was breached. Billy Ford and Walter Mason became one and the same man. And now Kathy's gone to tell the man she loved that her father was a criminal, an ex-convict. You suddenly realize now how unfair you've been to her. Let Kathy go to the Crane home, face the family alone. I told you so, Donald. I suspected that man from the very start. Now, just a minute. Mother, the... Really, Mrs. Crane, there's no need... Please, Catherine, you don't understand. They'll pounce on this like a flock of vultures. Newspapers, tabloids, everyone. Just a minute. Perhaps... Dad! I'm sorry, Catherine. I'm afraid oh, I'm no, no, wrong. wait a minute, Dad. Uh, Donald, I, I think you'd better explain what's happened here. Of course. There was an attempted hold-up in town this morning, Mr. Mason. The butler here tried to rob one of our bank messengers. And he was killed, Dad. Sharp was killed in a gunfight. Sharp? Killed? I'll get it. Probably one of the newspapers again. Sharp was killed instantly, Mr. Mason. Then he didn't... You... You know? Kathy told me all about it. And your mother? She knows nothing about it, and she never will. Shh. It's for you, Mr. Mason. A man called Charlie, I think. Charlie? Then he's all right. Thank you, Mr. Green. Yes, Charlie. You okay? Not only am I okay, but I'm a hero, pal. Reward money and everything. Say, listen, about that dough. You still need it, brother. I've got it. No, Charlie. But everything's gonna be all right now. Everything's gonna be real great, Charlie. Thanks. 